We now present For the Record. The Assembly debates a series of trans bills. This is something that is part of a, a national project around the country. While the legislature also molds impeachment of a sitting Supreme Court justice. Potential conflict of interest is not the same as a crime. And so impeachment would not be warranted. Welcome to For the Record. I'm Will Keneally. This week, the Assembly passed a series of trans-related bills along party lines. The three bills would bar trans athletes in Wisconsin from participating in women's sports at the K-12 and collegiate levels. A third bill would bar gender-affirming care for minors. Now, we heard from a local Dane County legislator, too, who spoke on the Assembly floor during the debate. My son and other members of our transgender community know exactly who they are. And ultimately, that's what the vile hatred and intolerance of this legislation and hate of our transgender community seeks to destroy acceptance. Acceptance of people who want to be their true selves. These bills will now head to the state Senate. We're joined by Phoebe Petrovic, an investigative reporter with Wisconsin Watch who's been covering these issues and bills. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So first, I kind of want to start out with a definition here. What do we mean when we talk about this idea of gender affirming care? So it's really a broad process that is nonlinear and it looks different for every single transgender person, um, but it involves social, um, medical, legal components that all you know, serve to make a person um, look on the outside as they feel authentically on the inside. So it can include things like social transition, which is simply you know, changing your name or your pronouns, changing your haircut or the way that you dress, um, to things like eventually when you get to puberty and after puberty, potentially taking blockers or hormones, potentially surgery, or things like changing your gender markers um, and your names legally, uh, so that when you hand your driver's license or your passport over to someone Someone, it reflects who you are on the outside. And so now, what does this look like from a healthcare perspective, and who governs some of those decisions? So, in the United States, the World, uh, World Professional Association of Transgender Health, or WPATH, um, and the Endocrine Society are two of the primary organizations that develop the standards of care um, that sort of is the guideline for what gender affirming care should look like. Um, and the important thing to know is that the medical aspects of gender affirming care or affirming, affirmative care are endorsed by every single mainstream medical association in the United States, um, well over 20 of them, including the American Medical Association um, and the American uh, Academy of Pediatrics. And so um, these guidelines or these standards of care are what um, Clinics in Wisconsin, there are two w clinics in Wisconsin that treat gender diverse youth. Um, that's what they use to determine what care they will provide and when. And so gender affirming care, the medical aspects of it look very different depending on how old a person is, um, how their body has developed and what stage they are in that development. So. Um, before puberty, just you know, young children, um, elementary school age, um, there's no medical aspects involved in gender affirming care whatsoever. They may go to a gender, or they may go to a gender clinic and talk to a clinician, um, but that's just a psychosocial assessment. Um, they might get access to resources and books and support groups. Um, you know, might walk the parents through what to look like and, or what to expect, um, but there's no medical intervention that is offered until a child hits puberty. Um, then when you hit puberty, um, and if a child is diagnosed with gender incongruence, which is part of the standard, and parents consent, um, and the child assents, um, there may be puberty blockers that are offered and then uh, hormone replacement therapy going on estrogen or testosterone. Um, and then from there, um, in Wisconsin, there are no bottom surgeries, no genital surgeries offered for to anyone who is under 18. Um, and one clinic at in Wisconsin offers um, chest masculization surgery only, um, sometimes to people who are under 18, but really it's like 16, 17, and only in extreme cases with um, a really comprehensive assessment, assessment beforehand. Some of this legislation distinguishes between uh, kind of this age of puberty, but also kind of the age of majority, 18. Um, that's a difference of a couple of years. Uh, what would that mean for somebody who's uh, looking to get this gender affirming care? 
Yeah, so right now, you know, um, the earliest medical interventions that a child or adolescent can get are at puberty. And so, you know, puberty is a um, can happen anywhere from 8 to 14, depending on the person. Um, and that's a significant time where our bodies go through a ton of changes. Um, and transgender adults who didn't have access to gender affirming care when they were children, um, who maybe didn't come out until they were adults, um, some of them have reflected and said, you know, I was forced to go through a puberty that was sort of innately programmed into my body, um, but that conflicted with my gender identity. Um, and, you know, as a result of that, I've had to spend a significant amount of time, money, and, and sometimes, in some cases, pain, um, going through procedures as an adult to sort of, you know, try to reverse some of the effects of that ingrained um, programmed in puberty. Um, so like a trans woman, for instance, testified um, at, at these hearings um, a couple weeks ago or last week, you know, that she had to spend a lot of money on electrolysis to remove her beard, voice training to change her voice. And these were things that she potentially could have avoided if she had access to puberty blockers and then feminizing hormones while going through that puberty. So that's one of the big things is blockers, which give people time and space to develop their identities, decide what they wanna do, and then hormones um, that might allow them to go through one puberty rather than two, um, that just aligns with how they feel on the inside. Um, that's sort of the main thing. And then, you know, surgeries don't really happen very often um, and they don't happen at all. Um, uh, for genital surgeries or bottom surgeries before the age of 18. There are a lot of comparisons that we heard um, this Thursday during the floor debate, uh, drawn comparisons to some Scandinavian countries. Um, how do how does this legislation and the kind of policy that we're looking at here in Wisconsin compare to what they're doing uh, kind of in Europe over there? It's a really misleading and false comparison, which is made all the more ironic. Um, the fact that these Scandinavian countries that they refer to are social, have socialized medicine, and we definitely don't like that here in, in the US. Um, but no European country has implemented blanket bans on gender affirming care for transgender youth as American states have done, or in Wisconsin's case, um, proposed to do. VB Petrovic of Wisconsin Watch, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, when we come back, a Madison legislator, Sheila Stubbs, is calling for a task force to address missing and murdered African-American women and girls in Wisconsin. We'll sit down with her right after this. The growing dangers on reckless roads, Monday at 6. Dreaming of the delightful drowsiness of the perfect mattress? Then the incredible value sale at Denver Mattress is for you. Save 100 bucks on every 1000 you spend, plus four years no interest and free shipping. Score sweet savings on some serious Shedi only at Denver Mattress. Are record energy costs putting a squeeze on your fixed or limited incomes? With inflation rising at record levels and incomes not keeping pace, you might be one of tens of thousands of Wisconsin residents who are struggling to survive in the blistering heat of summer or the bitter cold of winter. While you haven't asked for it, the Keep Wisconsin Warm Cool Fund and your local energy assistance providers are here to help. No Wisconsin resident should ever have to face the challenge of living without heat or power or face homelessness. For a hand up, apply today and call 1-800-506-5596. That's 800-506-5596 or visit www.kwwf.org. Get ready for a culinary blast from the past. Madison Magazine's Best of Madison 2023 Taste Throwback Edition. Enjoy rockin' flavors at this totally rad throwback retro extravaganza. Dress to impress in 70s to the 2010 style. Help us honor the Best of Madison Reader's Poll winners and celebrate with libations and culinary samples. October 16th, 6 to 9 p.m. at the Edgewater. Get your tickets now at madisonmagazine.com. Dreaming of the delightful drowsiness of the perfect mattress? Then the incredible value sale at Denver Mattress is for you. Save 100 bucks on every thousand you spend, plus four years no interest and free shipping. Score sweet savings on some serious shut-eye only at Denver Mattress. 
Welcome back. This week, a Madison legislator called for a new task force to address missing and murdered African American women and girls. Joining us now is that legislator herself, the first black state representative to represent Dane County in the state capital, Sheila Stubbs, and thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Will, for this necessary interview. Uh, so I want to first ask, can you just tell us a little bit about your goal with the creation of this task force? The reason I introduced this legislation is that there is a clear problem in our state of Wisconsin that sees African-American women and girls missing and murdered at disproportionately higher rates than white counterparts. And so this task force that is going to be comprised of 19 members we're bringing together legislators, law enforcement officers, representatives from organizations that provide uh, legal services, representatives of organizations that already provide targeted um, services to African-American women and girls, such as advocacy and counseling, violence prevention and victim services. So I think it's critical that we have a perspective of every key stakeholder uh, who will help us formulate a concrete plan uh, to bring an end to these uh, inequitable and violent outcomes. So I am excited to tell you that uh, when I introduced this legislation on the 10th, it is bipartisan legislation. It is two Republicans that are co-authors. So I really wanna thank um, Representative Michael Schraw, who is my colleague. And I want to thank um, uh, Senator Jesse James and Senator Latanya Johnson, who are co-authors. And this legislation is bipartisan. And we are really excited about that because it gives this piece of legislation an opportunity uh, to get a potential hearing, um, to get into um, different committees, to make it to the floor, to hopefully become law and get this necessary creation done of a task force and begin to address the underlining issues that I think have led us to some of the daunting disparities. Late last year, our neighbors in Minnesota released a report on a similar task force highlighting a number of disparities between the rates of black women and white women to be murdered in that state. Their report found that black women and girls have uh, been speaking and sharing their expertise, but have not often been heard. From your experience, is that similar to what we're seeing here in Wisconsin? Absolutely. And first and foremost, I want to thank the former representative Richardson. She, uh, we reached out to her office to talk to her. And I commend the state of Minnesota for really being a leader in this, in this work. I think it's time that Wisconsin take our, our position uh, of the 90,333 black women that were murdered. 33.5% um, were murdered women. That's five women were killed a day. And Wisconsin has the highest number of disparate numbers. And so it's time that we begin to address an issue that's right here in our state. Now that report has also recommended establishing a missing and murdered African American women office, increasing coordination between state agencies, making improvements to emergency and long-term housing options. As someone with human services experience, do you see issues currently with interagency communication and coordination here? Well, you know, and I'm glad you said that. Uh, being a local um, elected official for 16 years working at the county, I can share with you it's really difficult to get agencies to share data, right? Because no one wants to be blamed. But I can say in Dane County, we did a wonderful job under the leadership of County Executive Joseph Parisi of putting MOUs together, memorandum of understanding, and really being clear about what we're looking for. And while we've got you, I have to ask, uh, we've had on County Exec Parisi last week to talk about his upcoming retirement. Do you have any plans to run for his job? My, <laughs> thank you so much for asking me. I've been asked a lot of questions. I am focusing on being the state representative for the 77th Assembly District. I love my district. Uh, constituents have been so wonderful uh, to me. So I'm focusing on um, being a state representative, but thank you for asking me that question. Representative Sheila Stubbs, thanks so much for joining us. And when we come back, Republicans are keeping the pressure on to impeach Wisconsin's newest Supreme Court justice, the new liberal vote that is likely to overturn the state's abortion ban and legislative maps. We sit down with a legal expert on those ethic questions involved right after this. Spas, spas, spas. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is coming this weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Rose and Rose of Spas, Hot Tubs, and Swim Spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only at the Arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Hello. 
After driving cattle in the 1880s, hitting the hay could be a literal experience. But some lucky cowpokes got to sack out in a brand new Sealy mattress. And after 140 years, Sealy is still delivering a great night's sleep. That's why Denver Mattress is proud to offer the Sealy Posturepedic Plus Hybrid with cool to touch covers, body hugging memory foams, and motion reducing coils, you'll sleep cooler and more comfortably all night long. Denver Mattress, the easiest way to get the right Sealy. There's a reason big dental bills often come as a shock. Because sometimes you don't realize what's not covered until you get the bill. That's why affordable dental insurance from Physicians Mutual is important. It can give you benefits that go beyond what you get from more limited coverage plans. Because no one likes a big dental bill, especially if you're retired or on a fixed income. For a free information kit, call or go online now. This isn't some discount plan or prevented only coverage. This is real dental insurance that helps cover over 350 procedures like cleanings, fillings, crowns, bridges, root canals, even dentures at any dentist you want. Dental insurance from Physicians Mutual Insurance Company helps cover preventive care, basic work, and major procedures with no deductibles and no annual maximum. For your free information kit with all the details, call now or visit sendinfokit.com. Physicians Mutual, Physicians Mutual. Spa, spa, spa. The Swim Spa Hot Tub and Sauna Show is coming this weekend only at the arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Rows and rows of spas, hot tubs, and swim spas. The largest display in the state. Save up to 60% on all in-stock models. This weekend only at the arena at the Alliant Energy Center in Madison. Welcome back. Questions are swirling in the state capitol over whether Republicans will move forward with impeaching the state's newest liberal state Supreme Court justice. Now, her election in April flipped the balance of the court in the favor of liberals for the first time in more than a decade, putting into motion the prospect of overturning the state's abortion ban and legislative maps. Now, Republicans want to oust her if she does not recuse herself from a current maps case. Now, that's despite two retired conservative justices recommending against impeachment this week. And Assembly Speaker Robin Voss still says, though, that impeachment is on the table. If we see that the contributions that the Democratic Party made to her, expecting a result, result in that, that will certainly be something that we have to keep on the table. But what would an impeachment trial look like? And what are the recusal rules for jurists? We spoke earlier in the week with UW-Madison law professor John Gross about those ethical questions. So judges are bound to recuse themselves from cases when they have a conflict of interest, an, an actual conflict of interest, and in that um, whatever decision they render in the case would somehow um, advantage them. Um, and also sometimes judges uh, recuse themselves when there's just the potential appearance of impropriety. Um, in a situation where the judge might not really think that they're compromised, but nonetheless, the public might view the situation and have some doubt, then their uh, judges are encouraged to recuse themselves. Um, and and they, the standard in terms of benefit, right, is usually not just to the judge themselves, but uh, the, it's usually phrased in a way where it extends to the judge's family, the judge's friends, and so, the, the, the judges can't be making it. And obviously, if they know the litigants, they can't decide the case. Um, so it's, it's really about um, ensuring that not just that the judge isn't conflicted, but also that the public doesn't think that the judge is conflicted. You hear kind of this connotation where like the appearance um, can be just as dangerous as the actual thing. Does that kind of exist in these judicial ethics here? Whenever you talk about legal ethics, whether it's um, a lawyer representing a client or a judge making a decision in the case, you always need to be mindful um, as to whether or not there's an appearance of impropriety. But when you get to the Wisconsin Supreme Court and any other Supreme Court, there isn't another judge who can step in. So if a judge at a Supreme Court level decides that they have to recuse themselves, there's no replacement meaning that you've got one less vote on the court. And typically, right, courts are set up so there's an odd number of justices. So you can't have a tie. But if a judge recuses themselves from the Supreme Court, you create the possibility that the judges could actually deadlock on an issue. And decisions at the Supreme Court obviously reverberate throughout 
not just the legal community, but throughout all society. And so, so when you talk about a Supreme Court judge, there, there, are, there, are, there is a, a greater urgency for judges to hear cases and vote on cases if, if they can legitimately not be subject to a conflict of interest. When you talk about judges expressing opinions or views, and, and the issue for this is, is Judge Prosewitz mentioned during her campaign that she believed that the current electoral maps were gerrymandered, they were rigged, okay? And, and that's, that's the heart of the issue is that statement where some are saying that indicates that she crossed a line that she affect prejudged any case having to do with claims of illegal gerrymandering. As a judge, she still needs to be able to find a legal reason to rule a particular way. So, and a good example of this is actually some of the recent cases that went to the U.S. Supreme Court on this, on this idea of legislative gerrymandering and whether or not it's appropriate to do so, the Supreme Court said there isn't a remedy for this. In those opinions, Justice Roberts, Chief Justice Roberts expressed the view that gerrymandering was a threat to democracy. He disapproved in the opinion of what legislatures had done to rig the system for one party over the other. He himself said, when looking at these maps that were brought to him from other states, he said, these are rigged, but I don't have a remedy for you at law. There isn't a constitutional principle that I can apply here that wouldn't violate the separation of powers doctrine. So while he was critical in just the same way that Justice Protosewitz was critical during her campaign of gerrymandering as a practice, and that it is antithetical to democratic ideals, he still ruled in a way that didn't allow the court to redraw the maps. These judges also have to be candidates um, oftentimes too, um, especially on the Supreme Court. And obviously they have to make various public statements that will win support from voters, maybe not necessarily on a traditional Republican Democratic issue, but on issues of the law. Um, do you have a sense of like how uh, in Wisconsin law judges are supposed to navigate being both that impartial kind of blind jurist and a candidate at the same time? Yeah, the, the ethical rules for this are, are, in one sense, they're clear in that the ethical rules say that a judge running for office cannot commit to ruling in a particular way. They cannot commit to rendering a specific decision on a case that's being litigated. They, they can't promise to rule in a particular way. Um, however, um, you know, judges are permitted to express their views about various issues. And so while the law seems to be clear in application, there's some ambiguity. And I think you outlined a little bit uh, kind of what it means to like prejudge a case, um, for example. But um, what would be the recourse for a judge? Um, I guess, for example, even as clear cut as like a criminal case to say, oh, this defendant, I know for a fact this defendant is guilty. Um, what would be the recourse for something like that? There's a lot of discretion vested in the individual judge. Ju judges are presumed to be able to put aside all sorts of biases that they might have and be impartial judges of the facts of the law when called upon to do so. So a lot of it is self-regulation. There, there is a, a, an ethics code for a judge. There is a disciplinary code for them as well, um, where they can be sanctioned or reprimanded if they do something that violates that code. Do you have a sense of, uh, is there any clear cut definition of what corrupt conduct in office looks like for judges, or is that up to interpretation? I think there's two issues here. Um, well, there's the impeachment issue, and clearly impeachment is an extreme remedy, and it is meant to be used when judges abuse their authority in office, when they commit crimes. I mean, th those are the grounds to impeach an elected official, and I think that's true across, uh, you know, in, in every instance where you've got an elected official, whether it be a judge or a legislature or, or an executive, right? Impeachment was meant to remove people who have committed serious crimes, who are guilty of corruption in office. And, and it's, it's not for an ethical dispute, right? It's, it, the, the, the debate over whether or not a judge should be recusing themselves in a case is really a matter of 
judicial and legal ethics. It doesn't amount to the commission of a crime. I think the uh, the opinion that's being rendered here, I think the judge's opinion is, is correct, that a conflict, a potential conflict of interest is not the same as a crime. And so impeachment would not be warranted in this type of situation. When we come back, a look ahead to a busy week coming up at the Capitol. We'll be right back. It's A1 Furniture's anniversary sale with up to 44% off store-wide and 44 months free financing. Plus, get tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. You've been together for so long. Now it could be the end. Fortunately, you took your six sewing machine to the electric needle. They have the skills to fix most machines within seven to 10 days. Find sewing success at the electric needle on the frontage road of Seminole Highway. This is you. And you are why we do what we do. Each and every one of you are wonderful, amazing people. So we'll treat you that way on your journey of trusted care. Because the way you, 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 and you feel matters. Unity Point Health Meritor, a partner of UW Health, know how much you matter to this world. Imagine a world with no drama. I haven't signed Jody's card yet. At 4imprint, finding the promotional products you need to create a memorable moment is an easy mission. Our expert team will take care of every detail to make your success a certainty. Take the drama out of ordering promotional products at 4imprint.com. 4imprint for certain. Congratulations! It's a new sewing machine from the Electric Needle. It's more accurate than older models and has hassle-free threading. Plus, it comes with free unlimited owner's lessons. Find sewing success at the Electric Needle. Frontage Road off Seminole Highway. Don't miss A1 Furniture's anniversary sale. Save up to 44% off name brand mattresses and get 44 months free financing. Plus, get tax included on purchases over $9.99. Huge selection in stock now at A1 Furniture. Madison's locally owned family furniture store. Finally this morning, we were looking a few minutes ago at those legislative maps when we talk about impeachment. Well, Republicans introduced their own legislation they say would create a nonpartisan process to draw new legislative districts. Now that bill was rushed through the assembly without a hearing, but we will get a hearing for those bills this Thursday in the state Senate. We'll have more coverage on that throughout the week. That does it for us this morning. I'm Will Keneally. Have a great rest of your weekend. This has been For the Record.